Praise the Lord. Greetings to all in the precious name of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity He has given me to come before you with the word of the Lord. I welcome you to the program, The Bread of Life. In this program, I would like to talk to you on the topic of the love of God. And this topic, I would like to talk to you in four episodes. So, I hope that these four episodes is going to be a great blessing for each and every one of you. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. It says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that we can see that the love of God is such a great love. You know, there are many kinds of love in this world. But the love of God is a unique love of God. When we see this translation of John 3 verse 16 in the Greek, the word for love is given as agape. The agape love of God. The word meaning for agape is the love of God towards man. And the words, the same words that we can see, the same word agape we can see and the words that is 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called as the children of God. So in three words, John 3 verse 16 we saw, for God so loved the world. Here we can see what a great love. So from that verse itself we can understand that this this love is not a small love but it is a big love that's a huge love let me make you more clear of this agape love of god through summarizing its points its characteristics you know first corinthians chapter 13 exclusively talks on this topic of the love of god and if we summarize from this chapter and from other chapters of the bible we can understand the characteristics of the love of God, the agape love of God. The first is that agape love of God is the highest form of love. So when I tell that this love is the highest form of love, you may ask that is there any other type of love or is there any other kind of love? Yes. There are almost seven types of love. And out of the seven type of love, the highest form of love is the agape love. That is a love between God and man. The second characteristic of this agape love is, we can read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. So that is the second characteristic of agape love is, it is the perfect love. It means 100% love. Every other love in this world that we can see, they have their own weakness, they have their own faults, they have their own negatives. But in the love of God, we can't even find one person of mistake or one person of fault in it. That's why he says it's perfect love. It is 100% love. The third characteristic of this agape love is it is selfless love. That is what we can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. It says, it, is, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. So that is what we told that this was exclusively, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 exclusively teaches us or talks on the topic of the agape love of God in that we can see that it's not self-seeking. It means that this love does not seek the interest of the person who gives that love, but it seeks the best of others. Every other form of love, it is, it is a selfish love. That every people love others so that they can gain something from others. But this selfish, this type of love is a selfless love. It only seeks the good of others. The fourth characteristic of this agape love is that it's an unchangeable love. That is what we can see in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. It says, The love of God exceeds for a thousand generations. 
so it keeps on going and going and going it always remains the same it has it never changes many people think that the love of god increases when i do when I obey god's word when i do those things for god god's love increases and if i do a mistake god's love decreases but let me tell you the love of god doesn't increase or doesn't decrease it always remains the same that is why we can read in hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 it says for the Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, even his character cannot change. That is God. Whatever he does, it doesn't change. It always remains the same. The unchangeable love of God or the consistent love of God. The fifth characteristic of the love of God, it is an unconditional love of God. God. Every other form of love is based on condition. If you love me, I will love you. Or it always depends upon the status of a person. If a person is good, we all will like that person. We all will want to love that person. If he's rich, people will love him. But if a person does a mistake, or if a person is poor, or if a person doesn't have enough money, or if a person has done a big sin, people will hate him, people will insult him, people will throw stones at him, people cannot love him. But this agape love is the love of God. That is what we can see. This agape love is unconditional love of God. That is what we can see in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. It says that though we were sinners, but still Christ died for us. Though we were sinners. So even though we were in the clutches of sin, even though we were in the bondage of sin, still the Lord loved us. So that we can clearly understand that this love doesn't love us based on condition whatever your condition is right now let me tell you that jesus loves you jesus needs you the another the sixth characteristic of this love is it is a sacrificial love of god you know god sacrificed the father god sacrificed his son and jesus sacrificed his life that is what we can read in first john chapter 4 verse 9 it says this is how god showed his love among us he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him so that is sacrificial love of god he gave his one and only begotten son the one and only kind the unique one jesus christ he gave he sacrificed his son that is this kind of love the another characteristic that is a seventh characteristic of this agape love is it is a first love it's a first love as you can read in first john chapter 4 verse 19 it says we love because he first loved us so it's not that he loved us because we loved him but we today love him we today praise him we today worship him we today serve him because he first loved us so this is the first love the final characteristic of this agape love is it's eternal and everlasting love of god that is what we can see through uh, psalms 136 it clearly says after each verse it says for his love enters forever for his love enters forever for his love enters forever it never stops man has a starting point man has an ending point but the love of god it doesn't end it keeps on going it keeps on going it keeps on going and keeps on going now let us see how the father god showed his love to his people now let us see how the father god shows love towards us you know the key words that we read for this Topic John chapter 3 verse 16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son So that is the first way through how the father God showed us his love by sending his only son The second thing that God shows out of the agape love is what we can read in Matthew chapter 5 verse 45 it says he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. 
so for God it doesn't matter between righteous and the unrighteous for both of them he sends rain that is what he does out of the love out of his love so that's what I, I want to mention one important point is that, that this agape love is not just a feeling but it is more than a feeling which is expressed in action every other kind of love that we can see many love in this world it is just uh, telling things out of the mouth but very less we see it in action whereas agape love God doesn't say to people people I love you people I love you but his love is always expressed to some or other kind of action that is what right now we are learning so that's what right now we have just read for you that God sends rain God makes his son to rise both on righteous as well as the unrighteous he's not he's not partial he sends his rain both on them because both are his children both are his creation so he can't separate them he has to make his son rise on them and the rain to shower upon them the another thing that we can read in ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 he, there we can see that he predestined us for adoption to the sonship through jesus christ he made us his sons we were his sons but through sin we went into slavery and he called us back through jesus and made us his son another thing that we can see in ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 it says he made us alive in christ even when we were dead in our transgressions he made us alive in christ so once we were dead but today we are made alive so all these four things that God sent the Father, God sent His Son. He makes the sun to rise on both righteous and unrighteous, as well as make the rain to shower on both of them. And third, right now we saw that He made us His sons through His Son Jesus Christ, and it also He made us alive in Christ Jesus. So these are four things that the Father God did out of the agape love. Now let us see what did his son do, Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ also is the son of God as well as he is a God. He also has to show the same agape love. Now there are common things that we know, just I want to repeat, and that's how we can understand that it's such a big love of God. That Jesus left heaven, he came down for us, he left the Godship, he left that equality with God. He took the form of man. That is what we can read in Philippians chapter 2 verse 7. He was born in a carpenter's family. He went through all the suffering. He went through all the hunger. He went through all the temptations. We know that he's a king of kings. He's a lord of lords. He could have been born in a palace. But he chose. He chose to leave. He chose to start his journey from the lowest. And... As he entered his ministry, we know that he healed the sick, he casted out the demons, he raised the dead. And whoever came to Jesus, we know that he, from one place to another, one place to another, he was going around to preach the word of the Lord, to preach about the kingdom of God, to heal the sick, to cast out the demons. But any person who used to come to God with any sort of sickness or whatever problem, Jesus never said no. That was how his love was. He never said he was busy. But if it was his time and that person believed, at that second, Jesus would heal them. And from that ministry, we know Jesus' suffering and his death on the cross. That we know that even at the, you know, the Garden of Gethsemane, he had all the chance to abort the mission. But just thinking about us, his love for us was so big that he told Father, not my will, but thy will be done. What a great love of God. When he thought that if I, if I would die for my people, I would lose the connection between the Father. But his love was so great that he did not think about himself, but he thought about us that we must come to him, we must be his children, we must worship him, we must enter into eternity. That was all in his mind. And that is why he suffered from the Garden of Gethsemane until the Mount of Golgotha. He was flogged, people spit at him, people plucked the hairs out of his face, but not even one 
time he rebuked them not in one time he destroyed them he was suffering because at that time when jesus was suffering the only face which was in his mind was the face of you and me what a great love is that love and no that even at the cross you can tell that you know when many people you know if a person is arrested and the court sentence him to death the court will ask what is your final wish and whatever that person tells as his final wish the court the court has to do it for him and that is what jesus also on the cross he asks the soldiers can you please give some amount of water but even at that point jesus died without even fulfilling his last desire did they give him vinegar a sponge that was mixed with vinegar which jesus could not even drink it and we know that the soldiers pierced his chest and all the blood was flown out of that body and we know that completely the blood was completely drained every single drop of blood that he shed until the cross was for you and me and was nothing it was not out of anything else but just out of this agape love for you and me and not only that even at the cross jesus forgave the sin of the sinner who was on his side and i showed him paradise what a great love of god that we can see now we can see some examples in the bible where we can more clearly understand this agape love of god when we look into the life of the good samaritan jesus tells as a parable of the good samaritan that we can see you know the good samaritan was a person that uh, there was a person who who was injured who was persecuted very badly and a priest came by but he saw and left secondly levite came he saw and left but thirdly this good samaritan came for him there was not actually a need for that uh, good samaritan to to take care of that person and to clear all his wounds but that is the agape love of god when the priest saw priest saw and went when the levite came and went for the good samaritan stopped there took him and went into the inn cleared up his wounds and gave him more money and told that keep it with keep it with them that he has to be completely recovered that is agape love of god and the example that we can see the prodigal Uh, in the life of the prodigal son uh, that we can see that the son disobeyed the dad destroyed all his money he came back dirty he came back smelling and uh, empty there was nothing good that he could say nobody could accept him we know that he finally ended up in a pig's farm ate in the feces of the pig but the right moment when that child when that son he came back to the father the father went and grabbed him and hugged him and kissed him see that was the the condition of that son was so bad that everybody would move away from him but that the love of the father made him to rush and he overcame every that love could that love pushed the father to go to the son and to hug him and to grab him see that is the love of god and even though the servant asks the father father even though you could not accept me even though accept the son asks the father father accept me as a servant for the father did not accept me as a servant because he deserved right now to be accepted as a servant but the father did not accept him as a father but made him back as his own son and they had a big or you can can say a grand party in their house that is that love and from this prodigal son's life 
the points or the things that we can understand from this agape love is that this agape love is a love that waits for your return. That how much ever you f go far from the Lord, but still the Lord is still waiting for you today. That if you take a decision to come back to the Lord, you might be a backslider. You might be a person who has gone away from God. But today if you take the decision to come back to the Lord, He is still waiting at the door, waiting at the place where you left Him. And if you are ready to come back, he is ready to give back the position where you lost. He is ready to call you as his own son, as his own daughter. So it's a great chance to come back to him. And the another thing that we can learn from this prodigal son is that this love is a love that accepts you as you are. Whatever your status, whatever your position is, whoever you are right now, it doesn't matter. Still, the love of God covers you like a blanket. How much of a sin you have done? I ask you that don't still continue in that sin, thinking that if I come back, will my father receive me? If I come back, Will my father take me to the home? Yes. Yes, my child. Yes, my son. Yes, my daughter. Though the prodigal son went, but he came back exactly the opposite way. Exactly the opposite way. In such a worse condition. But if the father could have such a grand party, think how much more our eternal and heavenly father can do things in our life. That is the agape love of God. He loves us as we are. It's not that we have done so many things to the Lord that He loves us. That we told that we did, that's why it says we did not find Him, but He found us. We did not go in search of Him, but He came in search of you and me. What a great love of God, that we must be called as the children of God. That is what he says, that, that this love is not just a love that is spoken through words, but it is expressed through the action. The actions that so many people reject, the, the actions that so many people don't even think that they could have, that a person can show, that is how the Lord showed us. When people makes you away, many people uh, tells you to stay away, don't come near me. People insult you, people hate you for what the mistake that you have done. Once you might be a good person, once you might be a blessed person, once you might be the person who did so many things for God. But right now, your condition is very bad. Right now, you're a person that's away from Christ. Let me tell you, falling is not the matter, but rising up. Yes, my child, rise up. Rise up. There is a Savior that is waiting for your return. And if you are ready to return to that Father, He is there to bless you. He is there to lift you. He is there to hug you. He is there to cover you with this blanket. He is there to call you as His own son. He needs you. He needs you. He has greater plan for your life. He has great desires for your life. You are not supposed to be where you are. In the coming episodes, we'll discuss more on this topic. May God bless you all. Mm -hmm.